At the intersection of Broadway and 4th Ave in Manhattan lies Union Square Park. The park is only about three and a half acres, but contains a number of monuments from Gandhi to President Abraham Lincoln. One particular monument I want to focus on is that of the equestrian George Washington. The 26-foot-tall monument displays the first president of the United States on horseback. Built by Henry Kirk Brown and installed in the park in 1856, this was the first equestrian statue in the city since a 4,000-pound gilded statue of King George III dressed in Roman attire was torn down in 1776 at Bowling Green. Brown's George Washington statue was also the second equestrian statue built in the United States after a monument to Andrew Jackson by Clark Mills in Washington, D.C. three years prior. The equestrian George Washington statue has been a centerpiece for numerous demonstrations in the city's history, from the Great Sumter Rally prior to the Civil War, to the first Labor Day Parade, to more recently serving as a meeting and grieving point for New Yorkers in the aftermath of the September 11th attacks. While this monument has had a great history, what I want to focus on is the fact that Brown chose to commemorate Washington by making an equestrian statue. Up until this time, equestrian statues were usually reserved for kings. So the question is, why did Brown choose to portray Washington, a president and general, on horseback? The main reason for Brown choosing to commemorate Washington with an equestrian statue is because of the ancient Greco-Roman influence on the collective architecture of 19th century America. As America was nearing the brink of civil war in the mid-1800s and the fate of the young nation in peril, the idea of neoclassical architecture began to arise. This style of art and architecture aimed for a return to the purity of ancient Greece and Republican Rome as the American empire was beginning to divide. After all, as Del, Up as Del Upton said, monuments say more about the people, times, and places of their creation than they do about the people, times, and places they honor. The influence of these two Mediterranean empires is echoed in countless neoclassical monuments throughout the city. To see this, one does not have to look more than a few blocks south from the monument of the first president. The Washington Square Arch draws upon the features of the Arc de Triomphe in France, but more importantly, the first century Arc de Arch of Titus, built in Rome. Brown himself based his sculptures off European designs while at the same time trying to create a unique American identity. His equestrian statue of our nation's first president draws upon the features of the oldest standing equestrian statue in existence, that of the Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius. Most of the equestrian statues of that time were made out of bronze, and as such were melted down for coins or for new building projects, so the fact that this statue is still standing is quite a feat. Moreover, Medieval Christians demolished a number of Roman statues thinking that they were pagan idols. However, this Aurelius statue was wrongly thought to be the first Christian Emperor Constantine, thus it was spared of destruction. While the similarities between this statue of Aurelius and Union Square Park's George Washington are certainly prevalent, and the reasons for a statue that elicits the ideas of Greek and Roman republics is surely a contributing factor in Brown's decision to build an equestrian monument, Brown's statue was shaped by a number of other pieces outside the Greco-Roman tradition. Along with the aforementioned monument to King George III, another British monument that impacted Brown's equestrian statue is that of King Charles I. Built by the Frenchman Herbert Le Soir in 1633 and locating, located in Charing Cross, London, England, this monument influenced the statue of King George III at Bowling Green, as well as Union Square's George Washington. While, Brown, while Brown's Washington statue was a product of the American neoclassical time period, and thus was influenced by both Greek and Roman ideals, as well as the British monuments before it, Brown's statue did some influencing of its own, with monuments following after it capturing its likeness, like George Washington in Washington, D.C., and the equestrian statue of Theodore Roosevelt, at the Museum of Natural History in New York.